I finally found the perfect RV. Well, the perfect RV for me. And that is an A-frame camper by Forest River. It's the Rockwood model, model number A214HW. So in this video, I'm going to open it up and show you how to set it up ready for camping. And I will give you a quick overview of what the features and everything it comes with, because it is hard to figure out what is the best RV for you. If this is your first time here on my channel, my name is Mariana and I post um, outdoor related content, just basically my outdoor adventures, a lot of camping, uh, tent camping or RV camping, um, some hunting and some fishing and just hiking and just basically anything I do outdoors. So this is how you open up this trailer. The first thing you need to do is make sure you open the latches on the sides. This particular trailer has two, one on each side, but yours might actually have four total. So make sure you walk around and unhook them. Otherwise it won't open. And then you just simply push a button. It's right next to the front door and you just push it and they just start raising. Now at first it has to sort of kind of unlatch from each other, but there's really nothing you need to do. And I want to mention that this is super slow. I have actually speeded up this video as fast as I could, but it's still super slow. So you just, you know, wait until it opens. And these are the two sides, the sides that form the A. Those are electric and then the other two walls you're going to open up manually. To open up the two walls, it's not hard, but actually it's a little bit tricky and I'm going to show you what happened to me. Um, this is how I will remember this because I did it wrong at first. So as you see, uh, you go inside and you open up the door, right, so that you can kind of fit in halfway and then you push that wall up. It's a little bit heavy, but I think it's doable. Um, then what you need to make sure is that you will latch it on the inside to the two walls. And here I was doing the opposite wall um, and this one fell on me. So this is what it looked like. It actually just fell and I didn't get hurt, but I could have. So where I was standing, it actually sort of grazed my butt um, so I could feel it. But if I stood a little bit closer to that wall, it would have actually fallen on my shoulder or my head even. So you have to be careful. You need to make sure that um, you latch these walls. And as you can see, that's what I did. I made sure on that side and then I opened this back up and I latched it from the inside. And that's really all you need to do. However, I did it wrong and I'm going to show you how to do it the right way. Then I tried to close the door and I realized something was wrong. Basically, they didn't line up. The top part would close, but the bottom was going on top of it, whereas it was supposed to be under it. So it took me a little while to figure this out. And I realized that I had to completely undo that wall. So I went inside, I unlatched it and then closed it back down very carefully opened the top part of the door and then I closed the bottom part. So try to remember to do it like this the first time and then you open it up and then the top part of the door will go right on the bottom part of the door and then you can latch them together and then they will, they will close the right way. So most of the work is done after this. Um, you go to the side and open up that little pop-out window and there are three latches on it. Somehow two of them don't have a room to put a lock on it. I don't really know why it's like that. The one in the middle had a lock. So I took it off and, and then I opened it. And at first it took me a little while to figure this one out too. But basically... I had to climb up and then just pushed it up. If you don't push that 
um, roof part up all the way, it will fall back down. But if you go all the way up, then those two arms on the side, um, I think they're called hydraulic arms. So on the sides, they will actually keep it up. And then all you have to do is you go inside and push out the three walls that go one on the front and then two on the side. You just basically push them out and you latch them all up. It was actually pretty simple, kind of um, self-explanatory. This is what it looks like from the inside. It's probably a little bit chaotic. I was trying to um, film this while I was doing it with one hand, but this really was not hard. You just saw all the latches and you just latched them up. But one thing you can do, I would suggest to videotape everything. When you buy a trailer like this and the person will close it for you and open it, make them do both and, and videotape it. And this way, when you go camping for the first time, it could be a week later or a month later, you will probably forget a lot of this information. This is just too much to retain. And that way you have a point of reference to look at the video, how something was done. So then the next thing to do is your bathroom. And this is really cool because you have these walls around the toilet shower combo and they just basically fold down. Um, you open them up and you latch them together. Then you have the door that's usually kept on the bed while in transit and you just put that on and that's it. I have now owned several different type of trailers and I do know firsthand how hard it is to figure out what exactly you want. And the issue is often you're spending a lot of money and then you find out it's not what you want. And then you might end up losing money in the process of selling it and getting another one. So just six months ago, I had completely dismissed owning an A-frame camper and I bought a little tent trailer and it turns out I didn't like it. It's not for me. A lot of people love it. There are lots of positives about it, um, but it's just not something that I want. So I ended up using it twice and then I sold it. And then I did some in-depth research and I carefully identified my needs and wants and and um, the musts, you know, what are the non-negotiables and what are the things I can live with. And I figured out I really needed an A-frame camper and there were really two models, only two models out of all the different brands that have what I need, nothing more and nothing less. So this particular model has a bed. It's big enough for two people with storage underneath and it has a dining room table, which also folds down so that one person can sleep on it. And it also has some storage under. Then it has a sink and it has a three burner stove and it actually self ignites. It comes with a larger refrigerator and a freezer. And the freezer was very important to me because when I go hiking in the summer, I need to be able to make ice and freeze my water bottles. And this was the only model that had that. It has a cassette toilet, which is very easy to clean and a shower. And it has the walls around it. That was very important to me. Um, this was the only model that also had that. So that was a must. And besides that, it has a microwave. That is the only thing I actually don't really need, but I can use the cabinet space. It has a lot of storage areas. I really love that part. So this large storage area here is accessible from the outside as well as from the bed because it's under the bed. So this here is in the front of the trailer and you have this container you can actually pull out. So you don't have to crawl in to reach something on the other side like I had to do with my other trailer. But this goes underneath this extra storage that's in the front. And when you lift this up, you can actually put some things on top. So this is much better organized. You can actually put more things here. You don't have to just stack all these things on top of each other. And this was a surprise. This is a grill. This works with uh, propane. And you can actually attach it to the front wall next to the door. And there's also a propane extension right there. And this comes with two propane tanks and an electric jack and one battery. Um, this is on the other side. 
some more storage that also pulls out. So I'm going to keep my tools here, um, the adapter and the extension cord, water hose, things like that. And this here attaches to the sink on the outside. So you don't have a gray water tank. What happens is you unscrew that and put on this at, um, extension, or I don't know what you call it. You put this on and you can simply just put a bucket underneath and the water will flow into it. So this comes just from your sink, or you can actually attach a water hose to this. In just a few days, I'm going to go camping for a week and I am going to take my friend Shailene with me. I don't know if you remember her last year during my spring break, we went camping um, in Northern Arizona and we kayaked down the Colorado River. We camped, we hiked, we saw some beautiful slot canyons and we had a great time. At that time, we didn't even know each other um, and it was just great and we have become really good friends. So we're going to do it again. So stay tuned for those videos. I plan on making quite a few videos about that um, being uploaded very shortly. And also, I think I'm going to make a video about, um, you know, comparing tent campers and, and AFIM campers and, and how to really figure out what you want. If you have any questions about it, um, if you want something specific for me to cover or answer, just leave me a comment, let me know, and I will definitely cover that in my video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. <music>